Hi, my name is Joe Lavin and I'm a massage therapist located in Seattle, Washington. Massage and Body Work in Progress is a new project I'm working on where I will be recording some of my actual massage or body work sessions and then posting the highlights so that people can get a more representative idea of my actual work and flows than they can from my instructional videos for licensed massage therapists. So even though this is not an actual therapeutic massage session, it is very representative of the work that I would do with this specific unique person if it were. As it is, T is a good friend of mine who also happens to be a massage therapist. We are very comfortable with each other, have excellent personal boundaries, and feel very safe giving to and receiving from each other. Some important disclaimers. Uh, this video is for entertainment and general information purposes only. Nothing in this video should be considered as professional or medical advice. Nothing in this video should be considered to be approved as continuing education for licensed massage therapists or any other profession. Uh, some of the techniques that I use in this video are very advanced and may not be safe for receivers to receive or givers to give. Some of the draping may not be appropriate or even legal for licensed massage therapists to use in your specific jurisdictions. Always check what is appropriate for you and or your client or partner where you are practicing, when you are practicing. For instance, here uh, in my state, full chest and breast work is within our scope of practice and clients, male or female, can choose to have their chest draped or undraped in order to receive the work. Uh, we've chosen to use nipple covers for the video to allow me to work freely, but also allow T to feel that she was not overexposed. Uh, normally when we work, I will work on her full chest. Uh, in this video, I will work on uh, most of the chest and breasts, but will purposely avoid the nipple and areola. And you'll kind of see how that works, like here lifting my hand uh, to make sure that I miss any of the sensitive tissue there. Uh, each client makes their own decision in each massage, how they want to be approached, and each massage is different in this respect. Something unique about my body work is all of my body work and licensed, licensed massage is intentionally nurturing and caring. My work relies on a certain level of connection and familiarity uh, with my clients. It relies on mutual trust that is developed over time through shared experiences and clear communication. It's important to understand that my work is not intended to be erotic for the giver or the receiver. I go through a very thorough intake process with each and every client to make sure that we both have a very clear understanding of our mutual boundaries and intentions. Uh, that being said, I understand that there may be things that seem too immodest or even erotic to some individuals as they view the video, and there may even be uh, trauma triggers for some individuals as well. If you're easily triggered or have unresolved trauma issues that involve touch or sex, you might want to stop watching the video now or watch the video with someone that you trust and that you can talk with about anything that might come up for you. This technique or flow here is super popular with clients. A lot of times I'll be down on one knee, I had one foot to get some good leverage and really push their bodies over. I'm not being quite as aggressive here with T, mostly because she is so flexible and the range of motion and her shoulder and axillary is, is really excellent, so I don't need to challenge the joint um, as well as just work in and around it really well. When I teach full chest and breast massage classes, I start off by saying it's not always about the breast. Uh, most of the time it's about just having great access to the full chest, the axillary, the sides. Uh, you will see though here there's a lot of places that I, I tend to uh, really focus on in breast work. A lot of it's going to be the underwire areas, um, the, the outside lateral upper part of the breast often has a lot of just kind of striated tissue stuff that I want to smooth out and, and feel for consistency. I'm about to do some some really big stretch sequences here with T. Um, my background is a professional mixed martial arts athlete, jiu-jitsu guy. Uh, I started off with a, a ton of athletes and professional dancers and so I do a lot of really dynamic stretches with my clients. Uh, a lot of the stretch is mechanical, trying to get this great place of leverage for a specific stretch. But then a lot of the stuff I'm trying to do is while I'm stretching is to do something else so that I can uh, give my client more to think about than just this stretch. Actually, let me say that better. Um, give my clients nervous system more to process. I kind of want my clients not to be thinking so much. I really want them to let go, uh, but I am trying to uh, overwhelm sometimes the nervous system or give the nervous system lots of different things to process so that the most important part or the part they may have the most trouble with, uh, they are not focused on as much. So T is obviously very flexible and she takes very deep work. 
uh, as you are working with your partner or client or someone, you want to really make sure that you're working within their level of comfort and ability. There's a nice example of when you have this really good stretch, but if you can just go on the other side of that joint, whichever one it is, and put a little counter pressure, that stretch becomes wonderful for your client. You notice I'm constantly looking at T's face, even though she's got the blindfold on because of the lights. I'm looking for signs of stress. I'm trying to figure out if there's anything not, not good about it. She relaxes so well that her body does not give off a really great stress response if something's not going well. So I'm really aware of visual cues when I work with T. This is, is this kind of giant mortar and pestle where I'm really pushing the, the joint together and then I'm gonna pull it apart, trying to take it through its entire range of motion, find any restrictions. Use a lot of body weight here, a lot of pressure if the joint can take it. Uh, and again, here's another way that I'm gonna distract the joint using the foot as a base or a fulcrum. I guess that might be a funny place in the link for a fulcrum, but fulcrum nonetheless. My tendency is to always go back to my long, really nurturing body flows in between big dynamic stretches and movements. I'm also constantly palpating, feeling for uh, just anything in the tissues that I might need to come back and do more significant work on, what I can resolve with the flows. There I just went over the breast tissue, making sure I miss the sensitive tissue. Here I'm challenging the breast tissue. Um, and that's more after I've kind of figured out that I really have some stuff that I want to work on. Now as I go through, I spend more time on it. I don't just do it all at one time though. I don't spend like 10 minutes on the breasts and then move on the rest of the body. I, I try to integrate it with all my body work so that it feels like it's just normal and part of the process. Here I'm gonna start really working on her tummy, making sure the draping's good. I work under the drape as long as it is an area that she's indicated she didn't want draping um, before the massage period. I just said period, didn't I? <laughs> I do a lot of dictation, sorry. Anyways, here's some nice stretching I'm doing. I'm really using the pressure of her hand up on my shoulder to uh, pull the body as far as it wants to go. She's gonna come a lot farther than most clients do, um, so I don't overstretch in there. Then here I'll reach under. When my arm gets there, I kind of put a barrier so I can push with my body, keep my back in a good position, hinge at the hip, and I'll go all the way over being careful not to get my chest in contact with her chest in that moment. Um, here is a nice pullback where I get the head in the right position so that I can do a gentle but very profound lateral rotation and extension of the neck. And so I can assess that while also working on the surrounding tissue and shoulder as well. With some clients, I'll work really hard to keep the draping uh, really good during the massage. Uh, with T, she's chosen not to. She likes to not have it in the way. If we weren't videoing, we'd probably a lot less drape. And so everyone gets to decide the amount of modesty they want to uh, have used in their massage. Here comes some of the three-dimensional work. I'll start with a big push over here. With T, sometimes I'll even lock down her her hip that's close to me and, and actually push her off the table, let some gravity take over. I'm not sure if I do that here, we'll see. I have instructional videos on this, uh, I think it's called supine pullover. And, and if you really want to get the dynamics of this, I'll let you watch that. I won't over explain it here. Um, this is more of a functional representation than maybe of a really good teaching on it. And that really is the intention behind these videos. They're not designed to be these great teaching videos with the, with the best perfect techniques, but to really um, let people see exactly what I do during massages uh, that might be even a little different from what I teach. So uh, it can open your eyes to different possibilities. I do a lot of stomach work here, a lot of anterior hip work here. Um, you can see the shoulder. The shoulder looks just all cattywampus, but uh, it is, I check and, and it's really never an issue. It's a very comfortable position, even though it looks a little bit awkward for her. You'll notice the big thing here is that it's not, it's not a big uh, jerk off the table. I'm not using my power. I should lift my left leg here, my outside leg a little bit more than I did, but she's really easy to turn, so I didn't need to. Uh, and I'm just kind of seeing where her body's gonna go. 
If she doesn't come up like that, if I have to really lift, then I, I just kind of let him go back down and pretend I was doing something else. That's usually more of a, uh, a lateral rotation issue for them than anything about their body mass. Uh, so uh, again, working within their comfort, within their range of motion. I'll do a lot of manual work in this position. Uh, it's, it's incredible for the clients. I will tell you it's one of the more taxing things on my body. I do a lot of, of, of flexion with a lot of power, uh, fingers and wrists, and so you'll probably see a bit of that. You want to really be careful with doing too much of that on your own unless you've really developed your, your fingers, hands, and wrists and forearms for that. Otherwise, it can start to give you some repetitive stress injuries. Uh, so you want to you wanna really give your clients the best experience, but you want to find ways to do it that uh, cost you the least in your body. Looks like I'm getting ready to pull her over and probably off the table, so I'm just making sure the draping's good for that. Um, nice thing to do is either know what you're doing ahead of time or as soon as you figure out what you're doing, just make sure your client's ready and the draping's good and then move into your position. I just started doing these in the last year or so. Um, I call them gravity drops, and uh, especially with my dancers. It's, the dancers, I really have to figure out ways to get them uh, out of their own head get them to let their body go. Um, this is super easy on me. My leg is the base for her. It's, it's, it's my foundation. I'll take her all the way to the floor. Her hips will lock against mine. And then I'll, I'll do some different types of undulations or work or here I'm doing traction on her, on her skull. But just trying to make this dynamic, um, but, not, uh, but not too dynamic for my clients. And then here you'll see that just like getting the client off the table and, and into that gravity pose is a process, bringing them back up is a process. And so I'm not trying to do it all at once. That's not good for them. It's not good for me. So I kind of adjust and set, do the drape, adjust and set. Here purposefully, my knee is going to be in her back. I love getting this. That's a major chest opener. My knee is just over her spine on the other side and then her head is going to be the inside of my knee. Uh, later on, I'll probably shift to where my knee will come on to the uh, inside of her spine towards me and I'll take her head and put it over my knee away from me. Um, but this is a place where I get a lot of really great results. Clients um, uh, just love it. They, they, it's profound. They, they breathe really deep without being cued. Great access to the stomach with tea here. And just, just again, taking what the body will give me and trying to challenge it uh, in, in her range of motion and her comfort for what she needs. I just want to reinforce that, that T and I are, are great friends. We have about zero modesty issues. And this is, this is the, the really uh, not modest, overly nurturing and challenging end of my work. I would say this is probably about maybe 30% of my client base. And it would probably take five, 10, 15 sessions to get to this point with the client because I don't want to push a client too far in any way. I don't want to push them too far physically, uh, neurologically, emotionally, uh, with their modesty. And so I'm going to work each session and then say, how was that? Do you want to back off on something? Do you want more of something? Was it was the draping perfect for you? Was it modest enough? Did you feel safe during the entire session? Did you feel uncomfortable with any of the work that we did? I'm going to ask questions like these after every session to make sure that I can create the best possible massage or body work experience for each client. I only want to do work that empowers my clients and gets them closer to the goals that they have. This might be a good example of something that's, that's kind of standard in my massages is that I don't like my clients just face up and face down, 90 degree angle, perfectly symmetrical on the table. Uh, my clients, especially those that are either over flexible or we're working on getting that body to move more are going to constantly be in positions that are a little unfamiliar, that are a little more um, just where their body naturally falls after something. And so here, uh, T landed in the way, their legs off the table, so I don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I'm going to set up to use that, uh, create some leverage and do some profound work that is easy on me because of the leverage, but also that she'll recognize as something that is very distinct from work that she would receive just basically straight on a table. Um, it, it helps to, to get the client in the position where they feel like if the work is unique and special that it'll be more effective. And there's a lot of research that shows if clients believe the work is more effective then it will be and that's it's a great effect. 
because I don't believe that it is my the direct consequences of my work that ultimately quote unquote heals or fixes my client. Rather, I believe that my work can set my clients' bodies and nervous systems up to heal themselves, which is my ultimate goal. What you've been watching is a, a dance or a conversation between T or between her nervous system and myself where I am trying to give her a new narrative or expand on an evolving narrative that exists between her mind, her nervous system, and ultimately her, her body. All the nurturing and calming of the nervous system while I introduce new possibilities and movements to her body actually changes her belief system on a subverbal level, the level where it needs to change in order for it to become permanent. And yes, I'm constantly addressing specific tissue and joint dysfunctions and using good therapeutic techniques and stretches, getting short-term changes you would expect from all of that. But I'm after long-term, sustainable and systemic change with my clients. And I also don't want to be boring. And I don't want to have a, a, a meeting, a connection between two people and have it just be routine somehow. The same thing over and over again with no difference between client A, B, C and D. I want to have each client actually feel uh, appropriately that this is a unique experience tailored for them, tailored for their body, tailored for, for their entire life story up until this point, and appropriate and challenging in the right ways. And I believe when I work on that and I try the best I can, that that is where I produce the best results for my clients. Okay, I got maybe a little off subject there. Here I found a wonderful spot in her neck. Uh, my left hand you really can't see, but it's probably using um, some fingers to do some really specific uh, digital work on the cervicals. And I get down to a knee so I have good leverage, my outside hand supporting myself. Uh, so again, it's a place where I'm getting some specific work done in between all the, the really nice flows and gravity changes and all that kind of stuff. On the other side of the body so we'll just get a different look at, at probably some of the same work I did last time so maybe a little less commentary and more just uh, soaking in them visually. So I'm getting into a tender spot here in the anterior hip. And again, looking back and you know, trying to see if there's anything in the face that would show me some sort of stress response. Because again, T doesn't really exhibit those in her body as much. So when I'm not sure, I'm definitely in for visual cues. I do like to get a lot of my TMJ ambassador facial muscle work done from this position. It's, uh, it's got more going on. I've got an elbow on her stomach, an elbow coming across her pec and on her bicep. I can really uh, dig in, but not be just that complete focus on, on the work if I'm behind her doing it. So I'll throw that in. I also get lots of passes. I can come by five, six, seven, eight times while I'm working and get in there and soften things up uh, before I have to get behind and maybe do some more uh, specific work there.
So here the draping's probably fine, but I'm always gonna give it a little just tug or anything. I'm, I'm gonna go for this probably leg stretch sequence, yeah. And so even if I don't change the drape, I always just give it a little extra so my client, even if they're pretty comfortable, knows that I am really thinking about the draping uh, so they can just stay uh, comfortable and not worry about things. I will put a link to my, my intake form over in the description somewhere. Uh, you can look at that, it's four pages. One of the key things is, just because someone says that either they're not modest or they don't want their chest draped during uh, the chest work or that, that kind of thing, it doesn't mean their nervous system believes that. And so even though clients will, will choose that, sometimes I'll just feel like a client uh, somehow is exhibiting some sort of sign, maybe reaching for a sheet that's not there, um, getting a little, a little tighter in some area and I start working. And, and I'm going to work to the, the most modest um, uh, ask, whether it's from the client verbally on the sheet or from the nervous system when I'm working that may not think it's as immodest as, as their mind does, if that, if that makes sense. And again, on these stretches, it's that, that counter pressure on the opposing hip that really sinks that in. Uh, I recommend anyone that's interested in massage and body work at any level to take some Thai massage courses, go to Thailand, get, get some real Thai stretching education, and also any type of yoga education is going to really improve your body work at time. This is hard to see in the video, but there are so many different pressure points on her body. Um, my left wrist, my left forearm, my left elbow, my stomach, my outside right hip, my right arm. I'm torquing on that, that, that inside the, the right hip of hers. Here I'm using my body to get that leg up uh, so my hands are free to work. So I'm really doing a lot of different stuff with her body, with pressure, moving limbs around, and still being able to get a lot of soft tissue work done because my hands don't need to be occupied with that. And that's some of the stuff that really good Thai massage teachers are going are gonna to help you with. And then just working it out on your own. You're going to figure that out as you do more of the work. Here I'm going to want to be careful of her torque in the knee. So, so getting too much torque in that knee is not good. Her knees are, are really stable so I, I can play a little more there. But you always want to make sure when you're stretching one joint you're protecting all the other joints that you're, you're affecting. And that was a pretty dyna dynamic stretch sequence and so I'm going to go back to some really nice long flowing work making sure that it's just not you know technique 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 and that gets the nervous system activated uh, so I want to make sure and, and really balance my work well to keep my client in the best uh, nervous state to receive the work. Tissues that in textbooks maybe aren't connected, but I believe in the body are really connected. So that is why I work a lot of times across different joints and in different muscles, or across completely different compartments of the body. Um, sometimes in isolation, but most often there is at least uh, this layer of surface fascia that I'm definitely getting a stretch on and I'm trying to um, calm down, uh, work out tissue inconsistencies, figure out neural patterns. Uh, so that's a lot of what you're seeing when I do that. I also do a lot of over and under work, working under the body and over the body. Uh, so right there, there's a good example. And my right arm coming out through the, the piriformis, down through the glutes, and then through the anterior hip. Now I'm on both sides of the leg. So a lot of three-dimensional work, just with my hands as well as three-dimensional with their body. So T's leg is still comfortably off the table, but I'm going to go ahead and use it as a nice lever to get this uh, long cross-body stretch. I'm going to use my bicep and my hip to kind of get her hip over, push on her shoulder. There's my chest or sternum trying to make that a little more solid, letting go with my arm to get a better grab, coming up. I'll use my thigh here, I'm gonna push in, and that way I can maintain the stretch. My hands are available to work. So I'm constantly trying to find the easiest place to be in to maintain uh, the body's position, uh, the, the tension of the stretch, and leave my arms available for all the great work I can do. And here I'm getting 
getting some nice great palpation and work around the breast, but missing it when I come over, making sure my thumb clears the sensitive tissue, I'm always making sure that uh, I keep the agreements that we make in place before the massage so that I honor my client, I honor the boundaries. Coming up here some over and under work. I'm probably digging into the scapula pretty good or coming down the spinous processes and working on top of the chest and sternum as well. And that is where the camera ended. So hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any comments or questions, it might be better to email me. I don't always respond to the online comments because they can get out of hand. So do that and be amazing. Touch well. Talk to you later.